easy time, the good times, and the affluential times. Mm -hmm. Turn with me now to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, where we have came to in our, 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 our word for today. Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. I hope somebody is getting this. Verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, be strong, mm -hmm. not in yourself, but in the Lord, in the power of his boundless strength. Put on God's complete armor so that you can successfully resist all the devil's craftiness. For our fight is not against any physical enemy. It's against organizations and powers that are spiritual. We are up against the unseen power that controls this dark world and spiritual agents from the very headquarters of evil. Therefore, you must wear the whole armor of God that you may be able to resist in its day of power. And that even when you have fought to a standstill, you may still stand your ground. Now, it's clear that we're at war. It is clear that we're fighting a spiritual war against enemies who are far greater in numbers, intelligence, subtlety, and power than Israel had to wage war against in terms of the Amalekites, the Moabites, and so forth. All the enemies that they had to fight against, our war is far more greater. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, our enemy is invisible. Mm -hmm. Now Paul tells us to stand. Now in military term, it's for holding on to a position. Mm -hmm. Now in effect, before one can launch an attack, he must first hold on the position that he's in. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Phillips translation, the word against is used four times. Mm -hmm. Probably to stress the determined hostility that our enemy has. Mm -hmm. The Christian soldier is confronting something that, as a soldier, he could not overcome except that he himself also has invisible help to draw upon as a resource. Mm -hmm. And that resource is the Holy Ghost. Yes, and in military strategy, perhaps one of the most basic of all rules is never to underestimate the enemy. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday, we teach on the Sword of the Spirit show, we teach spiritual warfare, advanced training, and tactics, mm -hmm. or SWAT as I like to call it to prepare the body of Christ for spiritual warfare because we are indeed in a fight. Mm -hmm. Now understand this, our struggle is not merely against human foes, yet we find in other places that it is a war to the death. Mm -hmm. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 6, this, is, this idea is actually hidden in Greek. It's a war to the death against spirit, supernatural forces. The word powers denotes those who aspire to world control. And ancient writers used the term to designate the saviors, uh, uh, gods of pagan religions. We were talking about that last night, about all these kingdoms of the world. Okay, That is who we're fighting against, demons. Now our warfare then, has all the trappings of a literal war. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we can't see, yet it's happening nonetheless. 
That's why you got all these Christians that that say that, you know, I, I got Christ. I don't, you know, I don't have to fight nothing. I'm victorious in Christ. But the Bible tells us different because the qualities that we need to fight this war are not things we have inherently. Mm -hmm. We have to be given them by God. Mm -hmm. Our relationship with God is of supreme importance as to whether we're going to have the proper resources to fight this battle. Now we have to go to him and get them. And we also need to be on good terms before he gives them to us. Mm -hmm. So we have to be in right standing with God. Now, one of our most valuable of all these resources is the mindset that we are involved in the war. It says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. So there are times when we as a soldier are going to face uh, privatization and hardship, meaning that our families may be against us. The church may be against us. Mm -hmm. Our friends may be against us. Everybody may be against us. And there's going to be times when we're going to be in pain, both physical and mental. There are going to be times of, of sorrow that may lead us to depression and even bitterness. There will be occasions when we'll be in fear and feel a great sense of insecurity. There are going to be times when we win our battles, but be other times where we will lose and thus feel guilty and may be depressed. There are going to be times of obedience that give a feeling of exhilaration and of being in control, as well as times of disobedience when just the opposite will be in effect. Amen. But don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Because there will also be times when we'll be aware that God is disciplining us, mm -hmm. sometimes in terms of punishment for sin, and at other times in training to prepare us to master what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And there will be times of sacrifice and even times of death. Nevertheless, all these are part and parcel of a soldier's life. And we are indeed soldiers in the army of the Lord. Amen. Notice that the number of times in these few verses that we are exhorted to stand. We must hold our ground as we fight against the pressures of Satan in this world. Now, in verse 11, Paul tells us to stand Talk about Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 11, Paul tells us to stand against the devil's tricks. In verse 13, he encourages us to prepare to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, stand. Now in the next verse, he concludes in verse 14, Stand therefore and put on the armor that only God can supply. Now there are two things to notice here. First, we are to stand firm. Mm -hmm. Paul doesn't instruct us to be agile or swift of foot. To the contrary, he advises us not to move. We are to stand on a firm foundation, as it were. We are to be securely grounded, rooted, and unmoving. A person living a life of integrity is not shifty, but has solid convictions rather than preferences that vary with circumstances. Meaning that the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. God said he'd rather for us to be hot or cold, but not lukewarm. He said, I'd rather spew you out of my mouth like vomit. Second, Paul details the armor we need to take up. He lists several pieces of the whole armor of God. But the breastplate of righteousness deals most closely with integrity. Mm -hmm. Most soldiers in Paul's day wore a breastplate. And even today, the most basic protection offered to police and soldiers is the armored or bulletproof vest. Mm -hmm. Now, the Roman breastplate, primarily made of bronze and backed with leather, was worn around the chest, protecting the heart and other vital organs. Now, in Paul's analogy, his spiritual analogy, that is, the breastplate guards the heart, the seat of our attitudes and emotions. In other words, we are to stand firm in the truth. Our heart must be protected. Mm -hmm. Now, interesting enough, the translation of the New Testament by the Phillips translation renders the breastplate of righteousness as integrity, your breastplate. 
Now, Paul instructs us to protect our heart, our love, and our, our emotions with a breastplate of integrity. As part of the equipment, each Christian needs to stand firm in a spiritual war we have been recruited to fight. We must fasten integrity right across our chest to provide protection. What happens when a soldier takes off his breastplate? Well, he opens his soft abdomen to attack. He's unprotected. So spiritually, the heart becomes vulnerable, apt to be turned away. Now, verse 12 in Ephesians uh, chapter 6. Ephesians, look, look, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 tells us this. It says that uh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. Now this verse tells us that our warfare is against demons. Those are the angels that rose up against God. They look at us as invaders. As any invaded people would, they see themselves as rising to defend their home and territory, the fact, despite that they probably know that God has given this earth to us as an inheritance. So they're, you know, they look at us as intruders. But to be honest with you, I'm just a pilgrim. This ain't my world anyway. This ain't my home anyway. But I still have to defend it. It's just like when the uh, when the settlers were traveling from east to west, they encountered many difficulties in their covered wagons. They, they faced many obstacles, but they had to fight as they traveled to the land that they felt that they were going to. Even when they got to that land, they still had to fight mostly with Indians. Native Americans who had already lived in those lands. Mm. Now this is a spiritual parallel of Israel coming out of Egypt. Mm. Going through the wilderness to their inheritance in Canaan. Mm. But Canaan was already inhabited. Mm. The Canaanites rose up to defend themselves against those they saw as invaders. Mm. Who knows if the Canaanites knew that God.